Hey guys, this is Lala Legacy, and welcome back to another episode of the second reproduction! So, let's jump right back in. Now that I could step back and take a moment to think things through, I couldn't understand why I wanted to die. Yes, I had suffered a horrible shock, but normally I'd get over it. This time, I had come to the stupid conclusion that there was no other way. As if I'd been trapped in a room with no doors or windows my mind completely void of a way to or of a way to escape why i lowered my head wallowing in my own idiocy after i looked back up again i heard lizette click his tongue and mutter to himself setting you up like that is just hmm? lizette i called out to him uneasy but lizette didn't answer he let go of me and gave his usual smile instead You'll catch a cold if we stay here any longer, princess. Come on, let's hurry back. R right His beautiful smile seemed devoid of a motive, and I began to wonder if I was just thinking too hard. Tilting my head in thought, I decided not to pursue it further. We're complete oh yeah, we're completely soaked. I stripped and started wringing out my coat uh, the moment we got out of the lake. <laughs> you're right. Lizette squeezed his uniform dry, then scooped up the coat he'd left on the ground. He'd probably left it there in case it dragged him down in the lake. But still, we're in trouble. There'll, er, there'll be no end to the questions if anyone sees us like this, and if that anyone happens to be Gardas, then he might work it out uh, right away. Yeah, I don't think we can get away with just saying we accidentally fell in. Lizette had quickly made a fire as we talked, uh, its bright red flames crackling and snapping. I let out a sigh as I watched it and said, I guess we'll just have to wait for them to dry. Lucky our uniforms are designed to dry quickly. Almanin's uniforms were durable and light, and were designed to dry quickly if they ever got wet. I heard it was all thanks to a champion named Cristoval, who created them 1,000 years ago thanks to his fear of water and inability to swim. Either way, we'll catch a cold like this. Maybe we should take our clothes off then. A good point. We could just... W wait what princess uh, are, are you saying we should strip right here why are you complaining so much you're not a woman you know i don't have a problem with me stripping but i don't think it's a good idea for you what's wrong are you trying to say your body's better than mine or something well i'm sorry i look so weak i took my clothes off as i said or as i said that squeezing them dry and hanging them on a nearby branch. Um, princess. What? Hurry up and strip. See it as an emergency measure during a mission or something. Uh, uh, yes. Yes, you're right. This is a mission. This is a mission. This is a mission. Are you feeling all right, Lizette? But he kept saying mission, mission to himself like some kind of incantation. Feeling uneasy, I called out to him again. Yes, I'm absolutely, absolutely fine. No problems whatsoever. Oh, okay. I felt a little worried over his loud reply, but then I remembered what he'd said a moment ago. It's something I... er... Something I forgot. I was a woman myself, probably because... I'd been a part of the tough, scruffy world of night since I was little. Was Lizette worried about my feelings? If he is, then haven't I just done something really bad? I thought to myself, as if it was someone else's problem. Lizette's fire grew as I thought that, warming my body up. I felt a little tired, so I lay down beside it. <laughs> I must have chilled out quite a bit because I suddenly gave a loud sneeze. Even during the summer, it wasn't unusual for the temperature to drop once night began to fall. I hugged my body, its surface trembling slightly from the cold. 
I heard the sound of fabric rustling behind me, and before I could turn around... Oh, goodness! <laughs> Lizette! Ho hopefully, this will make you feel better. Was his voice trembling? Maybe Lizette was feeling cold, too. I suddenly felt really guilty. If I hadn't walked into the lake earlier, Lizette wouldn't be cold right now. Wanting to apologize, I leaned against him to help warm his or warm him back up. A uh, uh, princess. Hmm. His voice sounded higher for some reason, but I was sure that this would warm him up faster, so I wasn't doing anything bad. I think. Yes, you were right after all. This really does. Or this really does warm us up faster. Lizette's warmth made me feel really happy, more than anything else. But there was something else besides that. A feeling I couldn't recognize that smoldered within or within my heart. Something that wouldn't let me settle down, yet captured my heart like delicious sweets. It was an odd feeling. I had always been with Lizette. And we were like brother and sister, so why had I recently... I gave a relaxed sigh, and Lizette responded with a bitter laugh. I guess I have to be as unsubtle, or as unsubtle as Gardas to make you see it, huh? Well, oh well, I suppose there are some advantages to you being like that. What do you mean? Nothing, I'm just talking to myself. But there shouldn't be any secrets between us, should there? Yes, of course. No secrets. He sounded casual at first, but then he stopped mid-sentence as if he needed to think about something. Hmm? Between us. There's no secrets between us. His words felt strange for some reason. It didn't sound like he was trying to answer my question, I thought. It was as if... Oh, our clothes should be dry by now. But before my mind could settle on a conclusion, Lizette had changed the subject in his usual lively tone. On a day when summer was about to end, as the moon shone brightly over the capital, I had no idea what that weird feeling would turn out to be. No idea at all. Death Ride, 5th month. Me. A strange yet gentle feeling, as if I were walking on clouds. Save me! Everything around me was pitch black. I hadn't gotten blind. My surroundings were pitch black. All I could sense was the faint smell of smoke and blood. Please, someone save me! I woke up gasping, quickly placing my hand against my dripping forehead. Yet another nightmare. I had been, er, yeah, I had been having a lot of them lately. I had been haunted by nightmares ever since I tried to drown myself, and recently they had been getting clearer and clearer, so much that I was starting to grow afraid of going to sleep. Normally, I could see nothing but darkness all the way through, but this time, I thought I saw something horrible flash up, even though I couldn't recall what it was. Come in! My voice sounded exhausted. Having knocked politely on the door, Lizette stepped into my room, his expression changing as soon as he saw my face. He strode, in, or he strode to the side of my bed and knelt down on one knee, watching me with a worried look on his face. Another nightmare. Yes, they've been getting clearer day by day. What happened in it? I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. It was really blurry. I heard lots of crying and screaming, and the sound of someone being hacked apart. From the way my hands kept shaking and jerking, I think I was the one killing everyone. Lizette, who'd been quietly uh, listening to me, slowly turned pale as I looked at him. He'd frozen stiff and wasn't saying anything, making me feel uneasy over what I just told him. Lizette? 
<laughs> I'm sure you're tired, princess. I'll ask Kiria to make some more milk for you tonight. Then you'll be able to sleep better. Uh, okay. Did Lizette grimace for an instant? Maybe I was still tired. Before I got a chance to ask about it, Lizette turned away from me and started pouring some water into a cup. Is the seal coming apart because she tried to hide that? What are you talking about, Lizette? Oh, I was just thinking about how nice it is today. We should go on another re or we should go on another research walk later. Yes, it's a good day to go on a walk. I yawned, threw off my blanket, and slipped out of bed. With excellent timing, Lizette walked over with the or with his cup of water, offering it to me. I felt dehydrated from sweating all night, so fresh cold water was exactly what I needed. I quickly gulped down every last drop and enjoyed the fe or enjoyed feeling the last traces of the nightmare wash away. It was only a dream, remember? I need to pull myself together and get some fresh air. The comfortable breeze flowing in from the window helped me feel better, and I gazed up at the southern sky, relaxed and refreshed. Okay, here we are. We arrived at the village around noon. This place too? I'd started visiting various towns and villages situated in Deathride and try to understand the demon race a bit better. However, not all the villages were welcoming to humans, so sometimes I had to conceal my identity. There were sure to be villagers who'd lost their loved ones to a fake champion or two fake champions in the past, so it was the least I could do to make things easier for everyone. If I openly declared myself a human, I'd probably be rejected by most of the villagers. As a guest of the Demon Lord, they wouldn't lay a finger on me, but still. I stared at the village square, pulling my hood over my eyes. Maybe it was just the time of day, but there wasn't much of an atmosphere to this place. It felt more like an old ru a rural village than a community at war. If we could send Mother our reports and prove to her that the demons aren't barbarians, then... Lizette? Oh, yes, you're right. So it wasn't just my imagination. Lizette had been acting weird since this morning. Sometimes he'd just stare absentmindedly at nothing, or not respond if I asked him something. And just before I got a chance to see what he was looking at, he'd turn around and stare at my face. If there's something you want to tell me, then just say it! Huh? You've been acting weird since this morning. It's just your imagination, princess. Oh, that's right. Apparently, the next village on our list has a delicious local delicacy. He quickly changed the subject and ran ahead. There was definitely something odd about him. Annoyed that he wasn't being honest with me, I reached out to grab and interrogate him when... Yeah, it's a champion! The champions are here! Lizette! I'm on it. We hurried into the village and found the fake champion wreaking havoc. The champion was much worse than the other, screaming, I'm a champion, every now and then, and acting like a common bandit. He'd probably been running around the area, eyeing, or eyeing up jewels and women as he went. Right now, he was holding a woman under his arm, carrying her like spoils from a raid. Stop right there! A real champion has no need for jewels and women, do they? Put her down this instant and get out! Huh? What's your problem, bitch? You wanna die? You Creighton, how dare you speak to the princess like that? Ignore him, Lizette. Looks like he's just abandoned after all. It's my fault for taking him seriously. You, you talking to me, woman? You wanna try saying that again, huh? Provoked by my words, the man gave a loud roar and swung his giant sword. His blade was already dyed black with blood. He'd taken lives along the way, it seems. The realization sent pure hatred rushing through me. I narrowed my eyes into an icy glare, 
the man shrunk for an instant, uh, but quickly returned my gaze. Anyone who gets in my way goes straight to hell! Hm. What a worthless man. I easily dodged his sluggish sword swing, stepped, uh, stepped forwards, and jabbed the hilt of my own sword into his stomach. He leaned forward, taking the blow, allowing me to strike the back of his head. He was down before he could utter another vulgar word. <laughs> know your place, low life. Uh, thank you for saving me. The woman he tried to run off with smiled at us in, or with gratitude. Before I could return it, though, another scream came from across the woods. Come on, Lizette. Okay, I'll be his or I'll be his opponent this time. All right. Well, there's a chance he'll run away as soon as he sees you, Lizette. Uh, we snickered as we dashed through the trees, then silently nodded to one another. Once we were closer to our destination, Lizette and I split up to perform a pincer attack. Shh, what the fuck? Is that all you've got? There was a young woman and a child lying on the floor. The mother was clutching the child in a desperate attempt to protect him, making me believe they were mother and son. But it was all in vain. In one cruel movement, the man stabbed them both. Even though I was still relatively far away, I knew there was no hope for them. You bastard! What was that for? Oh, so cute young ladies like you are, are, are the new vigilante, vigilantes around here. The man's filthy laugh threw anger and distrust through me. What do you mean, what was that for? Isn't it obvious? You demons exist for the sole purpose of being killed by us humans. Anyway, how about we find out how high you scream as you plead for help, huh? Oh, what's wrong? Too afraid to say anything? Come on, we're gonna have a lot of... Fun? As the man gave a perverted smirk, there was an odd thumping noise, and an arm suddenly rolled across the floor. He quickly glanced at his right arm and saw nothing but a gory, bloody stump just below his elbow. <laughs> What's wrong? Weren't you going to have fun with me? The man fell backwards as I slowly stepped towards him, a gleeful smile on my face. Wait, I'll give back all the money I stole. Here, take it! But what about all the lives you took? You can't give those back, can you? Please, spare, at least spare my life. Didn't your victims plead for their lives too? Isn't it only fair that you suffer the same fate as them? No, please, I don't want to die! There was something else mixed into the man's screeching voice. Save me! Save me! Ah! Please save me! At the man's... Er, as the man screamed and screamed, disgust rose up through my chest, making me feel sick. I was going to throw up. Covering my mouth with my hands, Lizette burst out of his hiding or hiding place and quickly hit the man on the head or back of the head, rendering him unconscious. He then hurried to my side. Princess, I, I'm all right. Don't worry. I just feel a little sick. Why? Hmm? What? What am I do? No, princess. You mustn't go there. Huh? Uh, no, it's nothing. Don't worry. Let's find somewhere for you to lie down. I suppose you're right. Sorry, Lizette, but can you lend me your shoulders for... Princess. As I held my hand out to Lizette, the nausea came running back, or rushing back, even worse than before, along with an intense migraine and a loud ringing in my ears. Princess? This is weird. Lizette, I feel like... Like I've seen you look at me like that before. Look? Like you're pitying me. When was that? 
He had the same expression I'd seen from this morning. His face stiffened in horror, and he stepped back, covering his mouth with his hands and murmuring something. I see. So it is because I'm around her all the time. Lizette? But that is all the time that I have for this episode, guys. So if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe. By subscribing, you're becoming part of a legacy. I love you guys so, so much, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye!